Good morning, Faith Alive, and everyone watching and streaming online around the world. We're going to enter in praise and worship and give thanks to our Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are 
so much. We thank you, Lord, that you'll never leave us or forsake us until we come and we worship you this morning. We bless your name above every other name the Lord Jesus raised. We thank you for this beautiful Sunday. 
that we can come together of a light faith, light precious faith, and worship you. Yes. And Father, we come excited to come around your word and for you to speak into our hearts, for you to speak into our lives, Father, being God in our lives. So we welcome you here. You are so good, so good, so good in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him a big shout out. Yeah, send the devil running. Thank you, Maldonado family. Woo! Glory. Come on. We are so blessed. We want to welcome everybody online joining in this morning. We truly trust that God's got a word for you in season and out of season, right? We're all supposed to be ready for giving a word of testimony, giving a word to the world that doesn't know, the world that's scared and afraid that doesn't understand there's a God that loves them. And we need to be the church stronger than we've ever been. Come on, we need to stand up for righteousness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We've been made righteous because of Jesus, because of who He is. Yeah, that's a big shout out. Well, I was so glad that you could be here this morning. The Lord put on my heart. Uh, somebody was asking me yesterday, what are you preaching on? And I told them, and then... Uh, they said, well, unless he changes it. And guess what? <laughs> he changed it. But anyway, I believe it's a word that is truly for the church today, for each and every believer in the earth. And I believe that God wants to get something over to you and, and get his word coming out of you. There's so much going on in the world that could steal your joy which could steal your faith. Jesus said over in John 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. That's something we have to do. And I find myself in these days having to truly do that each and every day. Let not my heart be troubled. There's so much troubling news in the world. There's so much troubling uh, effects of what's going on globally. But here's the thing, church, we're the church. We are, we, are, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And so we've got to be out here letting our light shine before men so that they could see, see our good work, see what God's doing in our lives. We're a blessed people. We should be prospering in this time of adversity. We should be healthier than anybody else in this time of sickness and disease and plague. If we truly do not let our hearts be troubled, if we truly allow the power of God to rise up in us, we will not be affected by this. There are trickle-down effects. You know, people have been laid off. Big deal. God's still on the throne. We still worship Him. We still put, put our trust in Him, not in the world system. And if you've received money from the government, well... Thank God, you know, you got something. But don't put your trust in that. That can disappear just as quick as it came. But put your trust in the one who, who said, I am. Let that sink in. God says, I am. He'll be, I am tomorrow. He'll be, I am next Thursday. He's always with you and he'll never leave you. And he wants to encourage you today to trust in him. I think it was this past Friday I did a nugget on trust, and I encourage you to go back and listen to that. Because this some, gave me some word that I don't normally, you know, preach, but it just came up out of my spirit. Uh, he showed me in the word, and, you know, he's taken me to Proverbs and Psalms, and there's so much good stuff in there for today. It's relevant for today. Come on. So if you have your Bibles this morning... And I encourage you to have your Bibles every morning. It's not enough to just show up on Sunday, church. Come on. If, if you're going to be the light of the world, you've got to let the light shine and have it come out of you every day. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 6 with me. Ephesians in the 6th verse. I mean in Ephesians chapter 6. 
And we're going to start in verse 10. Most of you know where we're going. You know, it starts off saying finally, so you want to back up and reread the instruction that God gave us. Verse 1, he gives instruction to children. Well, we're all children. He says, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And he goes on to say to honor your mother and father. And we honored our mothers last week at, on Mother's Day. But we need to honor our mothers every day. So he, he talks about whether you're a free man or whether you're a, a slave and, and the right way to live. And in verse 10 he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. That's instruction to you and me to be strong. Not just on Sunday when you're hearing it. We need to be strong. But it's not of our own strength. It's not of our own carnal strength. That won't get us far. It's being strong in the strength of God. And God has implanted a strength inside of you that the devil himself will flee when, when that shows up. And you see, you've got to activate that power. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. So God has, God didn't get taken by surprise in the day that we live. He's given us an armor. He's given us an armor, you and I, an armor to put on. And we have to put it on daily. That you may be able to stand. You see, there's too many people that are having trouble standing because they don't have their armor on. And we want to put on our armor. That you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles, the, the tricks, the schemes, the plans, uh, all the strategies that Satan has to take us out. Well, you're all here this morning, so he hasn't done a real good job, has he? Because he can't. When we're strong, he's weak. When we let that strength up in us, the devil's going to run. He, he sees a church here that's not afraid of him. He sees a church here that's strong. And he's the weak one. He's under our feet. He's truly under our feet. He's been disarmed. He has no arms. He's been defeated. He's got no feet. He roams about as a roaring lion, but he doesn't even have teeth. His teeth have been pulled. He just he just roars here and there. And we gotta just put him in his place. Amen. <laughs> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You see, when we look at the news, we think we're wrestling against flesh and blood. We think we're wrestling against wicked people, and, and they are. But they're being dominated and being led and being controlled by Satan himself. And so we have to understand, our, our strength and our power is spiritual power. It's not in physical power. And we can pull these things down. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, so does everybody understand, we're not wrestling against people. We're, we're coming against spiritual forces of wickedness, of darkness, in, in, in the heavenly realms that are all around us. So therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Not just a part of it. Not just your little daily devotion. That's good. I'm glad you're doing that. But that's not where it stops. It doesn't stop until you stop the devil. And guess what? He's still roaming around, isn't he? So our, our war against the devil is never going to stop until we're out of here. We are called to occupy. We're called to advance God's kingdom. And not let Satan's kingdom rise up. And so the believer, when, when we see the things of the enemy rising up, we're supposed to take authority over them. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand. 
in the evil day. Would you agree that there's the evil days? Yeah. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Do you think God's trying to show us something here? Friend, he wants you to be standing. The only time we're not standing is when we're on our knees praying. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. I'm reminded of what Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32. He says that the truth that you know will set you free. If you want freedom, then you've got to speak the truth. He goes on to say, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, if you're in Christ, then you need to know that you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 5.21. We're not trying to get righteous. We are righteous because of who we are Amen. in Christ. Yeah. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having put on your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, church, we're the peacemakers. Yeah. we got to run... We, we got to run this tribulation out of here. This pressure. All the anxiety that the enemy is trying to inflict on us. we got to say no. If we truly take God at his word and be strong in the Lord, then we will not allow Satan to have a place. Matter of fact, God instructs us in uh, Ephesians 4.27, I believe, neither give place to the devil. Well, you know, you're giving him place when you get into fear. When, when you listen to the news and you get fearful of what is or what is going to come, then it's dropping your shield of faith. Because you can't be in faith and be in fear at the same time. That's why when I watch the news, and you ask my wife this, after the news, I have to go open my Bible. I have to get into the Word to get the, those, those fearful thoughts out of me, because those are fearful thoughts of what's coming. But we're not taken by surprise. God told us what would come in these last days, didn't he? Yeah. He said there'd be wars and rumors of wars. He said there'd be kingdoms against kingdoms. He said there'd be pestilence and famines and plagues. We're seeing all of that. So we shouldn't be surprised, but we should be strong. <laughs> and he says, above all. So it gets gooder and gooder taking how many are taking the shield of faith how many how many have your shield of faith with you this morning we don't have shields of faith that are all dusty in our closets we use them every day there's no place to put them down he says take that shield of faith and what's that shield of faith going to be able to do it's going to be able to quench or stop all the fiery darts, my translation says, of the wicked one. That's, that's a scud missile. That's a plague. That's a disease. That's anything contrary to the word of God. Take the helmet of salvation. So if there's somebody here this morning and you don't know if you're saved, you need to honk your horn and somebody will help you get saved. Maybe somebody listening over across behind these trees. So take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I told you, we can't, we can't get away from the Word. We can't get away from the Word or we're going to get away from faith. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always. So there's a place for prayer. With all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That means praying in the Spirit. It's twofold. It's praying in your known language under the unction of the Spirit of God. Or it could be praying in tongues in your heavenly language which the Spirit of God gives you. But either way, He wants us to pray in the Spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication 
for all the saints. So when you find yourself, say tomorrow, and fear starts to come, grab the word of God, grab your shield of faith, hold it up in front of the enemy. You got to speak to the Lord. One of the nuggets I did in the last week or two was talking about the importance of our words. You've got to speak to the enemy. You've got to speak to that situation. You've got to tell that thing, it has no right to be in my life. Right. Coronavirus, this didn't take God by surprise. COVID-19 is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Now is it under you? Yeah. You've got to take up the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God, and you've got to declare and decree that that will not come near my house. You, you've got to speak that. Job twenty two twenty eight says, Thou shalt decree and declare a thing, and it shall be established. So if you want that established in your life, that you're free from this plague, then you've got to establish it. So we start by putting on the armor of God. As children of the Lord as born again spirit filled believers we want to be strong spiritually that's every day we do that by constantly feeding on the word of God most of us don't miss a meal we don't miss breakfast if we do we have a big lunch if by chance we miss lunch we gorge ourselves at dinner time but we don't miss physical food we cannot afford to miss spiritual food because this is where it's at friend Proverbs 18, 14, it says the spirit of man will sustain him in sickness or in trouble. Let me read that again. The spirit of a man will sustain him. Your spirit will sustain you in sickness or trouble. That means we've got to get the word of God into our spirit. And when we speak the word of God, it, it, it doesn't return void, remember? Matter of fact, let's turn there. Isaiah 55. You want to write these scriptures down. You want to meditate on them. Get them in your heart. In Isaiah 55, I'm going to start in verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and does not return there. No, the snow stayed all winter, didn't it? But water the earth and make it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. It goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. This is God speaking. But it will accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper. Say prosper. prosper. It'll prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Verse 12. For you shall go out with joy. And be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing. Before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Yeah. Bible says that if, if we don't cry out, the rocks will cry out. Well, we don't want that happening. We want to be crying out to the Lord. We want to be speaking the word of God each and every day. I know this, this situation that's going on has affected everybody globally. All the way down to how you grocery shop. And it hasn't been fun. No. It's not been fun. But you know what? We're above this. We're above this. Come on, we're a strong church. Because he said, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. In Matthew 4 and 4. Let's go over there. Is this okay this morning? I'm going to preach myself happy here. In Matthew 4. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You know, we're all tempted by the devil. 
when Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after what he was hungry. So he was at his weakest point right here. And Satan came and said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones be turned into bread. A nice fresh loaf of bread with butter dripping off it. Remember, he's hungry. But Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is written. He says that again and again when he answers Satan. We see it recorded that Satan came and tempted him th three times, but I believe he came and tempted him over and over and over. It was just recorded these three times so we could see what Jesus did when he was tempted. Because how many know you, you've been tempted more than three times in your life, haven't you? Yeah. He says it's written. So you need to tell the devil, devil, it's written. Don't you know, stupid? Don't you know it's written? That I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don't, don't you know that I'm the head? Don't you know that I'm the head and not the tail? Don't you know that I'm blessed? And I'm blessed when I go in and I'm blessed when I go out. Don't you know I'm but above and not beneath? And I have authority over you, devil. Because it's been given to me. Luke 10, 19, he says, I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. All authority and power that the enemy has. He has to steal it from people to get any authority and power. Because Jesus beat up on him big time. Hallelujah. At Calvary. Yeah. Whenever you face a trial or a temptation or a problem, the first thing you want to do is open up your Bible and get the word on it. Get the word on it. So if you're believing for healing, you want to get scriptures like Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He bore our sickness and he carried our pain. Jesus did that so you don't have to. It says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He took, he took the, that crown of thorns so that we could have peace. And it says, by the stripes that he bore, we were healed. In Isaiah 53, it says we are healed. But in 1 Peter 2.24, Peter's looking back to the cross and says, by the stripes Jesus bore, we were healed. Turn over to Matthew 8. Matthew chapter 8. Well, let's look at verse 14. Now, when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. And it says, he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served him. He didn't say she's got COVID-1 or two, or any other COVID. What did he do? Jesus always had compassion on people, and he met their needs. If they were sick, he healed them. Over and over and over, it says, and he healed them all. All the way down to today. He's not willing that you would be sick. He's not willing. He said in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. That's, that's all the time. So Jesus saw Peter's mother, his wife's mother, lying sick. He touched her. He healed her. And then when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word. And he healed all who were sick. You want to underline all in your Bible. You want to highlight that. He, he never left one sick. It says that he did that, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. 
And I already quoted 1 Peter 2, part of it, that by his stripes we were healed. If you're dealing with sickness, you're facing situation, maybe a bad report, don't stop at just those three scriptures. Keep getting the word in you. In Psalm 107.20, it says he sent his word and he healed them. He sent his word. Well, Jesus is the word. Jesus and the word, this word here, they're, they're, one in, they're synonymous with one another. You can't get one without the other. You get the word, physical word here, you get Jesus. You get Jesus, you get his word. And he says, he says uh, in Psalm 103, well, let's go over there. It's another good one. I'll just say they're all good. I've got favorites, and the only reason they're favorites is because they go off like dynamite in me. And so they're the ones that work for me. So you want to find your own. I, I give people scriptures all the time people are asking me. And I'll give them the ones that work for me, but I encourage them. Get into the Word, and when you find something, and by revelation of God, He shows you something, nobody can ever take that away from you. No devil in hell can. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You see, we serve a good God. That's why we sang today that God is good. Don't forget his benefits. This life as a believer comes with benefits. You wouldn't take a job in the natural and, and not find out what the benefits package is. You have benefits as a believer. It says, who forgives your iniquities? Well, there's a good benefit. He heals all your diseases. How many of them? All of, them? all of them. Who redeems your life from destruction. So friends, if you're here today or if you're listening online and your life, you're losing hope, well, st stop watching CNN or stop watching any television because that'll steal your hope. Get into the Word of God. I encourage you, this Word is supernatural. It's not just reading the Bible. This is God-breathed, God-inspired. This is God speaking to you and in you and through you. Remember, he wants to minister to you so that he can minister through you. Verse 5, he says, he satisfies your mouth with good things. I believe that's, you know, a T-bone steak. But I also believe it's the word. He satisfies my mouth with the word coming out of my mouth. The word that I need for the moment. Remember when Jesus said to them, he says, you know, he sent them out. And he says, don't worry about what, what you're to say. He said, the Holy Spirit will show you in that moment. We don't have to have it figured out in our minds. Just be prepared and say, God, I'm willing. Send me where you want to send me. Bring me in front of whom you want to bring me. And I trust that you're going to give me what to say. I trust that you're going to give me the words of life to that individual or maybe a family. Remember a few weeks ago we talked about the, the, the parable of, and story when the uh, person asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? And it's not just the person living right next door to you. It's wherever you are at the time, the people are your neighbors. And we're there to let our light shine. Amen? We're there to be the salt of the earth. We're there to bring encouragement to them. But listen, if you haven't been built up in the word, how are you going to encourage anybody? You're, you're going to be shedding tears right alongside of them. And that's not what God wants us to do. He said, be strong in the Lord. Look, this takes determination. This takes diligence. This, this takes perseverance. If we're going to be a strong church, then we've got to be diligent about the Word of God. He says, your youth is renewed like the eagles. So I declare and decree that your youth is restored like the eagles. You're going to rise above circumstances. You're going to rise above this COVID-19. You're going to rise up above all that's affected us. You're not going to go under, you're going to go over. Come on, you, you need to see. You need to see yourself winning in victory. 
Remember problems and trials, they come from Satan. In John 10 and 10, Jesus said, the thief comes. That's right. You preach it, though. You preach it. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I've come that you might have and enjoy life in abundance to the full. Till it overflows. Come on. Turn over to Job chapter 2 with me. You know, there's a good ending in, in the book of Job. And when I hear people talk about Job, it's poor old Job and how his life was such a mess. But when he got right with God, he got double of what he had in the beginning. And he was the richest and the, the well, most well-off of anybody in the East. But in Job chapter 2, verse 7, it says, So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job. See, so many people, I've heard all my life how God did this. But it says here, Satan went out and struck Job. Our problems, Satan's behind our problems. In Luke 13, turn over there with me. We need to establish this church. Because I hear too much confusion in that God is doing these things. That God is behind these things. And it's just not true. Not according to my Bible. Now, if they've got the Bible according to Satan, then that's probably true in their Bible. It's not the truth, but it's what they believe. Verse 10, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Oh, look out. He's probably going to get in trouble of being accused of doing something wrong. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Say 18 years is too long. She's bent over, so she's crippled, and she couldn't raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and he immediately she was straight, and she glorified God. Oh, look out. The ruler of the synagogue, he got ticked off because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. Well, I want to tell you, we celebrate... I mean, Sabbath, you, you can look at it scripturally and, you know, it's Friday night, sundown till Saturday. But, you know, Sabbath to me is every day. I can heal every day. I don't have to wait till a certain day. But anyway, they got ticked off and he, they said, there's six days in which men ought to work. Boy, we ought to just let the world know that today. That you're supposed to be working. Some of you get that on the way home. Therefore, come and be healed on those days and not on the Sabbath day. Yeah, like they really cared that this woman be healed. She's been sick for 18 years. Why didn't they get her healed in the six days for the 18 previous years? But Jesus answered. I love it when Jesus answers, don't you? See, we, we, we see in Psalms that, that when you cry out to the Lord, he hears you and he answers you. He said, you hypocrites, doesn't each one of you on the Sabbath untie his donkey or ox from the stall and lead it and water it? So ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound. See, we see the cause of this woman's infirmity. Satan had her bound. But guess what? Jesus made me free. Acts 10 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil so that means today Jesus will heal all that are oppressed of the devil and guess how guess how he does that he does that through you and through me we got to not be fearful of a name a name of a virus, big deal. There's so many other names out there that kill people too. And we need not be afraid of those. But this one seems to be sensationalized across the planet Earth. It seems to be globalized and it seems to be played up. And it seems to be uh, fearful in every bit of its way. 
But the church needs to be smart enough to know where to be strong in the Lord and not fear this thing. To deal with Satan effectively, you got to use the written word of God and it's got to come out of your mouth. Remember, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Turn over to, turn back to Acts. I don't know if you went to Acts 10, but Acts 3. And Peter and John had healed the man that was lame. And now Peter is saying how that was possible. In verse 16, Peter says, And his name, through faith in his name. It's the name of Jesus, and it's faith in the name of Jesus. You have to truly have faith in the name. He said in Mark 15, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You see, you've got to believe. What do you believe? In my name, they'll cast out demons. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink any deadly thing. It won't harm them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Don't be afraid. You know, Psalm 91, I'm not going to go there, but a thousand might fall at my, in Laconia and 10,000 in Guilford. But it's not coming near me. It's not coming near you. Because we're staying strong in the Lord. James chapter 4. Let's go over there for a minute. Is this stirring anybody up? Stirring me up. James chapter 4, verse 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. So when we do our part, we're submitted to God. We're submitted to his word. We're doers of the word. We're speaking the word. And we say no to the devil. Resist the devil. God would have never told us to resist the devil if we weren't able to resist him. That means we tell him no. No, you're not bringing the plague near my house. No, you're, I'm not getting in a car wreck. No to anything that the devil brings. Remember, for this purpose, Christ was revealed that he would destroy the works of the devil. That's 1 John 3 and 8. So resist the devil. Submit yourself to, to God's word. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He'll run from you as in terror. We have to do what Jesus said in Matthew 4. It is written, devil. It is written. It is written. Amen. Yeah. Got, we, we've got to remind Satan that we know what's written. So you need to get into this wonderful instruction manual. Remember, the Bible stands for basic instruction before leaving earth. I learned that in Sunday school. I don't know. It doesn't say that in the Bible, but it was catchy and I like it. Basic instruction. It, it, you know, we're still really in basic training. We, we've got the tools in the spirit realm to overcome Satan himself. But yet, it's basic information. It's not hard. Friend, God never made it hard for people to get a hold of his word. The reason people think it's hard is because they don't be led by the Spirit to, to know what it says. So if you're not born again, you don't have the capacity to understand the Word. It's just a book. It's just a literary work. But when you let the Word of God come alive in you, when you say, Holy Spirit, show me what you're talking about here, you'll truly be strong in the Lord. You won't fear anything. I mean, missiles could be coming through here right now, but they're not going to hit us. A couple of honks. <laughs> God is so good, which we sang about how good he is. And I want to encourage you as we leave today to continue to praise him. You see, we need to start our day with praise. We can praise our way right into victory in that day. Start with the word of God. Start with the meditation of the word. All right, go to, go to Proverbs 4. We can't close yet. Proverbs chapter 4. 
I hope you go back over these scriptures. This is the power, friend. The Spirit of God. And the Word of God. Well, let's start in verse 6. Oh, we can't start there. How about verse 1? Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. Remember over in Mark chapter 4 when Jesus was sharing with the parable of the sower, and then he said that the, the seed is the word of God. And in Matthew's account, he says that the, the, the word that was sown by the wayside, it's, he says that Satan can come and steal it immediately when you lack understanding. So what do we have to do? Purpose to get understanding. So give attention and no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. How about that? God gives us good doctrine. And do not forsake my law or my word. When I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Yes. Keep my commands, oh, look at this, and live. Keep my commands and live. Well, what's the opposite of that? Don't keep his commands and you give place to the devil to take you out. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. God's word will preserve you. Somebody's drowning, and you throw them a life preserver. Well, God's word is your life preserver. Love her, and she will keep you. It's talking about the word of God. Wisdom is the principal thing. See, it's not the CNN news. It's not the 6 o'clock news. Wisdom, the Word of God, is the principal thing. In all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. God's Word will promote you. You got laid off. It doesn't look good that you're going to get another job. You just put God's Word coming out your mouth, believing in your heart, and you'll get a bigger job than you ever had. See, you got to believe that. If you don't believe that, then you won't get that. It's just that simple. A five-year-old can get this, friends. Exalt her. She'll promote you. She'll bring you honor when you embrace her. God's word coming out of your mouth daily is what we're talking about. God will honor you. People in the earth will honor you because of the word that you put in your heart and out of your mouth. She'll place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear my, hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. Oh, I thought, I thought we all just got taken out when we turned a certain day. Not according to the word. We started in Ephesians chapter 6, and it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And it says, this is the first commandment with with a promise that you'll live long life so that's why we want to honor our parents i mean not just that reason but we can have long life i can know i can live long life i think jesus is coming coming down and getting me but if not i'm just going to keep living until i decide i don't want to stay here all right it's getting good or i promise you Hear, my son, receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I've taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. See, God will never steal you wrong. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. Boy, that's a, that, that deserves a honk. Come on. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you'll not stumble. Come on, Forrest Gump. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. See, that implies you could let go. I'm here to tell you, friend, and remind you, don't let go. 
Keep her, for she is your life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, he says, My words are spirit, and they are life. Verse 14, Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it, and do not travel on it. Turn away from it, and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they've done evil, and their sleep is taken away unless they've made somebody fall. There are people in the earth today hearing the voice of Satan and trying to make other people fall, but not us. Amen. Won't have it. Won't put up with it. No way, Jose. No way, Yahweh. Jose too, but... For they eat the bread of wickedness that drink the wine of violence, but the path of the just is like the shining sun. that shines even brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. So you have to find them. Did you see that? Their life to those that find them. It's why we keep pointing you to the word. It's words of life. Verse 22, the second part, it is health to all their flesh. God's word, friend, is a, is a healing word. You can take that to heaven. You can take that to your doctor's report and say, this is just a report. But my God says healing should, belongs to me. Keep my heart. A couple of pterodactyls coming over. Keep my heart with all diligence. I have to keep my heart. I'm the keeper of my heart. For out of it spring the issues of life. I started off today talking about the issues of life. There's lots going on from, from this virus, this plague, from job insecurity. I encourage you, do not put your trust in the government. We, we need to pray for our government. We need to pray for the people in high places. We need to pray for the people in low places. But don't put your trust there. If you haven't listened to my nugget, I think it was Friday. I talked about trust. You've truly got to trust God and no one else. If you're trusting in, in the world system, it's going to fail. And you're going to find yourself failing. But if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your paths. We need to be directed by the Spirit of God today. We need to be directed by that that inward voice, that still small voice. We need to be hearing from heaven like never before. The days we live in are crazy. I don't usually say that, but aren't they getting crazy? But we don't want to be fearful. But we don't want to be ignorant of Satan's devices. We don't want to be ignorant as to what's going on. There are things going on behind what we're seeing in the natural. And it's wickedness. But we started out saying that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. But we're, we're wrestling against principalities, against authorities, wickedness in high places. That's where our defeat, that's where we defeat the enemy. We need to speak to the enemy. I declare and decree that Satan take his hands off this bunch of people at Faith Alive. It, the, this virus, this, you know, we come against the works of the enemy every day. We have to be strong, church. We have to be strong. Don't let fear in. Let, let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Let the Holy Spirit give you the words to speak daily. For those of you that are still working, you, you go back to work tomorrow. You bring the light. You carry the kingdom. The world needs to see the kingdom of God because this kingdom is coming to nothing. We want to truly advance God's kingdom. We want to truly be bringing the light of the... We are the light of the world, Jesus said. We are the salt of the earth. 
We've got to bring to the world what they need. The world is crying out. They just don't know that they're looking for God because they've been deceived. They've been blinded, the Bible says. But we need to gently, and, and especially today, people are so fearful. We need to be gentle with them. We need to love them. We need to encourage them. We need to look for opportunities and ask the Spirit of God to give us wisdom for the moment at work, at the, at the Walmart, at the gas pumps. Remember, we're not of this world any longer. Our citizenship is of heaven. But we live here and we want to bring heaven to earth. And so it keeps getting gooder if we keep following the word of God. When we trust in the Lord, things are going to get better for you. So let's just close in prayer here this morning. Father, we thank you so much for your love and your faithfulness to us. We thank you, Lord, that you've not left us, you've not forsaken us. We thank you, Father, that you're right here with us. We praise you. We honor you. We welcome your word into our hearts. We welcome it into our ear gates and into our eyes. Somebody's just honking out to you. That was my car. Amen. Praise God. You know, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I encourage you to smile every day, to laugh every day, to, to just, you know, don't, don't make light of the situation, but be light in the midst of the situation. You know, let, let your light shine as we go through the storm. We're not letting the storm take us under. You know, a storm came through last night. Was it last night or the night before? Last night. Oh, for some it was last night, for some it was probably the night before. But anyway, it came and it left, didn't it? Yeah. This situation that, that the world is facing, it, it's, it's passing through. Amen. But we have victory. And I want to encourage you, we are going to be inside together very, very soon. I mean mm -hmm. sooner than soon. And, and, and we will let you know. I mean, it's, it's going to be real soon. Okay, it's going to be sooner than that. <laughs> but you know, this, this has been interesting. I've learned a lot having to stand on a flatbed trailer <laughs> and, and, and bring the gospel. I, I never saw myself doing this, but you know what? It's pretty cool. That, you know, when God said be ready in season and out of season, I guess this would be in season just in a different way. Mm -hmm. But nobody's shutting the church down. Amen. No devil in hell is going to shut us down because we are the church and he's not shut me down he can't shut my mouth and so we need to we need to be strong in the lord amen so i want to finish i was praying and my car just went ballistic so father we thank you and we give you honor today we thank you lord that we have the victory in christ jesus we thank you that we're more than conquerors we're thank, we thank you, Lord, that we have the victory, and the victory is by our faith. It's in that name of Jesus and faith in that name that brought that lame man up to his feet and strengthened. And it's that same name of Jesus that we go forth from this day and declare and decree that we have victory, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that any tongue that rises against us in judgment we will condemn that we will cast down imaginations in any high thing that exalts itself against the word of God. For we truly take our place. We, we are the violent and we take the kingdom of God by violence. The world that, that's run by Satan is on, the, is on the run. They're fleeing as in with terror because the church is waking up. The church is getting stronger. The church is coming together in unity like never before. And we're going to run the devil out of our area with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. So, Father, we thank you. We declare victory, and we shall walk in victory each day. We thank you for it and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>